Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. We're looking at illustrative math for sixth grade. This is Unit 8, Lesson 6, Histograms. The objective states I can use a histogram to get information about the distribution of data and explain what it means in a real-world situation. So remember, a histogram is a type of display um, that's a type of bar graph, but uh, you'll see that we group things in bins. And so it's not just uh, one bar represents one particular value, it's a group of values. So in this case, we're looking at um, weights of dogs in a dog show, and you can see that we have bins that are 20 pounds across. So the weights of those dogs is somewhere in that 20 pound range. Um, we don't have exact data points, we just do this in a way to get a a broader picture of the distribution of the data and we can see what it looks like overall. So let's look at this and break it down. Uh, 6.2 dog show part 2. Here is a histogram that shows some dog weights in pounds. Each bar includes the left end value but not the right end value. So for example the first bar includes dogs that weigh 60 pounds and 68 pounds but not 80 pounds. So a dog could weigh 79 pounds and 15 and a half ounces and it would be counted in that first bar but once we break that threshold and we get to that 80 pound mark then it moves into the next band. So it's everything up to but not including the number that's on the right end of the band. Uh, number one says use the histogram to answer the following questions. How many dogs weigh at least 100 pounds? So we're going to look right here. Remember that 100 pound mark starts on the left, doesn't include anything that was in the bar to uh, before it. So we've got total right here. Let's zoom in and get a better look. But we've got 14 here. And then this one right here is halfway in between four and six, so this must be five dogs, because we can't have like five and a half dogs, that wouldn't make sense. And this next one is three dogs, and this represents one dog. So we have 14 plus five is 19, plus two is 20, or excuse me, plus three is 22, plus one is 23. So we have 23 dogs that are at least 100 pounds in this dog show. How many dogs weigh exactly 70 pounds? Well again with a histogram we have a grouping, um, a band that doesn't tell us exact weights. We just know that there are six dogs somewhere in between 60 pounds and just under 80 pounds. So all six of them could weigh exactly 70 pounds or none of them could weigh exactly 70 pounds. We have no idea. So there's no way to tell using this histogram. Letter C, how many dogs weigh at least 120 and less than 160 pounds? So we're just going to be looking at this section right here. So 120 starts right there. I'm going to less than 160. So we'd have a total of eight dogs. It's hard to make that look like a... <laughs> Eight. I don't know where that W was coming from. Eight dogs. Letter D. How much does the heaviest dog at the show weigh? Again, this represents a bin, so that dog could weigh somewhere in between 160 and not quite 180 pounds. So it could be a 179 pound dog, or it could be 160 pounds. We don't know for sure, so we just know that it's at least 160 pounds, but less than 180 pounds. So somewhere in that range. Um, uh, letter E, what would you consider a typical weight for a dog at this dog show? Explain your reasoning. So when we're talking about typical weight, we're talking about the average, or we're talking about the median. So we're talking about one of those middle values, and we can think about a histogram being like a teeter-totter. So when we're looking at a histogram or even a dot plot or other visuals, visualized way of looking at our data, we're trying to balance that. So if you're on a teeter-totter, where would that fulcrum go so that it would be balanced? And I'd say that fulcrum probably goes about right here so that we'd have an even distribution of weight compared to its distance and its spread overall. So I'd say that the uh, typical weight is probably about 100 pounds. All right, um, if you used a dot plot instead of this histogram to answer these same five questions, how would your answers be different? Remember with a dot plot, we're plotting specific values. So we might know how many dogs weigh exactly 70 pounds when we have a dot plot, but we're going to end up having a different distribution of the data because we might have some gaps or some clusters 
um, and so it might take up more space overall to use a dot plot, but we could have more precision in our answers. So I'm going to write that, more precision in our responses, because we might be able to tell exactly how many dogs weighed 70 pounds, and maybe it's two, maybe it's zero, maybe it's all six in that particular band of weights. Um, again, our objective was I can use a histogram to get information about the distribution of data and explain what it means in a real-world situation. Thanks for watching.